Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Derek Miller. I'm with ARM, and uh, I'm here to talk about um, interplane communication on ARM CCA. I'll start with a very brief introduction of ARM CCA and uh, the planes feature, uh, but then I want to get into uh, some uh, uh, proposal that we've got on how uh, we should do this communication. And um, I'm very interested in your feedback, so I'll try to keep my part uh, short and I, uh, um, and yeah. So a uh, very brief introduction of ARM CCA is uh, basically it's a full software stack isolation from the host OS and hypervisor. It's, uh, maybe I'm stepping on something, sorry. Um, and uh, basically it's a blind hypervisor just uh, much like everyone else is offering. It's hardware-based security mechanisms, uh, has support for attestation, but we also have device assignment so that the TCB can be extended to additional resources for uh, cross PCIe or even on, on SOC devices. And if you're familiar with uh, ARM architecture, um, the bottom diagram, the, the right two thirds should be very f familiar to you. It's got the secure world and the non-secure world. But for um, CCA, we've added the realms, which is on the left. And uh, uh, particular of interest there is the RMM, which stands for Realm M Management Monitor. And uh, the um, uh, yellow boxes are the protected VMs. For planes, which is uh, ARM's ability to run multiple VMs inside the same realm, um, uh, it basically um, provides a uh, uh, P0, plane zero, is the most privileged of the planes. And uh, all the other planes are of equivalent, uh, they're equal privilege, so there's not a tiered system, it's just plane zero is most privileged, planes one through n are um, e equal. Um, uh, let's see, the RMM is part of the TCB for any realm, and uh, the RMM is the only piece of software that can interpose between planes that's outside of the realm. So uh, when we first looked at interplane communication, we obviously looked at uh, AMD's SCV SMP for their SVSM. It defines a binary inter-VM PL transport mechanism. It provides a core protocol, but it also has some uh, many AMD-specific details in it. It provides a discovery interface. It provides an attestation protocol. And it provides mechanisms for defining new services. Um, uh, some background, ARM has a firmware framework for a profile, which you'll notice it's designed, it's designed to standardize communication between the non-secure world and services running inside secure partitions, and it generalizes these interactions, but it can also work for interplane communication. Uh, the FFA spec has a lot of uh, ARM trust zone specific language in it, that being said, um, that can be worked and can, can be reworked to um, take account of realms and even planes inside there. It provides high-level abstractions and it uses ARM secure monitor call convention and it has a discovery mechanism. So going back to SVSM, um, we, we've got a binary interplane communication mechanism that, that will work, FFA. We um, don't really need a lot of a SVSM's core protocol. Um, uh, it provides a discovery interface, and it provides mechanisms for defining new services. But what it doesn't have is an attestation layer. So um, uh, what we're going to talk about is uh, LIME, which the backronym is still pending. It's a bit awkward, but I kind of wanted to put the LIME in the coconut here. Um, uh, so what it needs is an attestation protocol. It may need a discovery protocol so that a PN could be assured that the service that it is talking to is, uh, is being offered by plane zero instead of being offered by the secure world. That being said, we could also use the attestation mechanism and that could provide it the assurances that it needs in that case. Um, and it uses, utilizes FFA. And there was some internal debate inside ARM whether it should use FFA, which is a higher level protocol, or the SMCCC which is a bit uh, more basic. It's lighter, but it also doesn't ha offer as many features. Um, uh, so, and I actually wanted to show this diagram to make sure some things were clear. Plane zero is on the left. I'm sorry, the colors don't work out very well here, do they? Plane zero is on the left, and inside there, we can run our VTPM service, and we can run a LIME service, which can sit on top of an FFA layer and SMCCC. 
plane one, which is a, a secure kernel, which would need to be able to do the LIME attestation pro processes. And on uh, plane one, plane two is just the workload. And I've got two boxes in plane two, one showing the ability to just use existing TPM uh, drivers that use SMCCC, or alternatively, uh, the FTPM, I think I, it's a long acronym, but there's, an, there's a spec for an FTPM over FFA. So um, guest operating systems could use either of those using this model. And um, if we use the one on the left with the, um, uh, the SMCCC, um, that driver already exists in the Linux kernel, doesn't need to be updated. FFA, the firmware FFA driver is um, being upstreamed, I'm promised at this moment, but it's not in the kernel at the moment. So with our goal to provide uh, lift and shift capabilities, we, we would like to be able to provide both of those, and this solution does that. However, I am asking um, projects like Coconut and other projects that are implementing um, uh, interplane communication. This is uh, somewhat of a change. So um, uh, I think, uh, Jorg, do you have a question? <laughs> just, a, just a comment, basically. So um, the SVSM is not defined by the requirement for an SVSM protocol. There are other platforms that also don't need in, that don't have a strict need for an SVSM protocol. Um, and I don't see a reason why the Coconut SVSM cannot support a communication mechanism like SMCCC. So um, I think it can be a platform for what you want to do in P0. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's arm's decision whether it, makes, it wants to make use of it, but yeah, just that my comment from the Coconut side. Okay. Um, uh, so is there uh, any preference expressed for the use of SMCCC versus FFA? And if you don't know enough about it, I can go into some, to some details on that. But um, the basic uh, function of FFA is uh, to provide a higher level of abstractions, which may not be necessary. As you can see, the, um, it's possible to do a TPM with CRB without using FFA. Um, but the path forward inside ARM is to create new services using FFA instead of SMCCC. Um, because it provides more services. So um, uh, is there any preference or opinions in anybody on that front? Yeah, please. <laughs> I, I mean, I think it's always very disruptive to disrupt the guest software ecosystem with new driver requirements. So like, if they're functionally equivalent for you, why would you even bother doing the FFA version when you already have CRB done and working and upstreamed and in every distribution? Mm -hmm. like, it's just, I don't know. That would be where I put my... Okay, so um, uh, the way we're proposing the Lime aspect, the attestation part, is uh, it'll use FFA. Nothing existing uses that, so, uh, but we would still enable the drivers in the Linux kernel to work as is. Can you, ex can you explain why you need attestation of the TPM protocol when the TPM is already providing attestation of itself? Um, like yes. It seems a little cyclical to me? Well, no, actually, I would say it's not the attestation protocol. It's, uh, this is actually, um, uh, this, is, this is a bit of an eye chart, but the concept of this is exactly like the concept for AMD's SVSM. It allows, it, the, the purpose of attestation for SVSM and for Lime is to be able to establish trust in the endorsement key, the generated endorsement key for an ephemeral VTPM to an external relying party. So you, uh, so the plane zero or the SVSM implementation will request a platform attestation token and include in that token a hash of its endorsement key. That, an, that token will then get sent to the relying party, external relying party, which then uh, verifies the attestation token and then can est therefore establish trust that that endorsement key was generated inside uh, inside a plane, in this case. But why does the VM need to participate in this? Um, well, if you look in this uh, back over here, uh, the VM on the right doesn't have to participate in this. But uh, sorry, I mean, my yeah. question is: you said FFA provides attestation components. W why do I need attestation components in your command transport when the TPM already oh. has its own attestation no, framework? It's, like no, no, no. It's not. Uh, it's not providing it inside FFM. It's using FFM. So the Lime service on the in the center box. What's FFM now? Sorry. What's an FFM? Sorry. Uh, F uh, I, I don't know. I, what, what was it? I, I, <laughs> FFA. Sorry. FFA. 
It's not inside FFA. It's using FFA. But that's the, that's. I don't understand why that's there. Like why 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 I use FFA? No. Why do I need attestation? Why do I need yet another attestation? Um. Uh. It's it's. Uh. Let's see. It's basically it, it allows a relying party to establish trust in the endorsement key for the TPM. But the TPM should do that itself, shouldn't it? Like, um. It, uh, not in that case. TPMs typically have a persistent endorsement key, yeah. and you have that through a back-end supply chain yeah, solution no, yeah, where I you establish that. that trust. But if you're using an ephemeral key, I would yeah. sort of have expected that the TPM itself would go down to the RMM level and get some sort of attestation that it bundles up in its own attestation reply. Um, yes, it does. Oh, yeah, well, you do. That's, yeah, you'd have a notes and all of this and stuff, but like, I, that's what I would have naively expected. Like, it would have all been bundled in the TPM protocol, um, not layered on top. Yeah, go ahead. Maybe the, the point is, how do you know that, that the that EK is related to the TPM you're talking about? You're the VM. That one VM, you could just plug the, the, the TPM to another guest and you know if they're talking to your guest or, or something else. And this way you could make sure that the SPSM that you're talking to is really um, uh, the one that you're expecting. It's just an attesting the service, not the TPM itself. Mm -hmm. I'll give him the mic. Well, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it does, yes. And uh, we modeled ours on that one. That, sorry? Uh, yeah, of course. We're, we're, it's all early days. We get it. <laughs> okay, I get it. But so, like, when ARM, when everybody's defined the attestation, authenticate, oh gosh, what's the right word here? When we talk about, like, PCI device assignment, there is, a, there is a step where you say, this memory address is actually, you know, belongs to the device that I think it belongs. And it's very similar to what you're talking about here. It's not quite attestation, but it's like, you're just asking the RMM, it does the data that I think I have be the data that you think you have? Okay. So the question, so um, I have a different question. So why do you actually need the protocol? Because like uh, typically, I mean, these things are already like, you know, VM is running the OS and it knows how to do this protocol. So this, I mean, these protocols are not new. So, but you're saying that you need protocol from guest OS, I don't remember how it's called, P plane, whatever, non, non zero. Plane two? Plane on two, the diagram, let's say, yeah. yeah, plane two to plane zero. So you need a special protocol because we were able to get along so far, at least without any protocol. So um, the question is, so Intel, so okay. which, which, yeah. which was presented just before. So we actually like, you know, using ETPM and SVSM and we just use, you know, private MMIO as a communication. So why do you need the protocol, the new protocol? Oh, oh I would say so that um, when you've got a plane two workload, it doesn't actually care what is running in plane zero, whether it's coconut SVSM or as an example, um, our prototyping work has been done on Linux KVM in plane zero, or some of our other prototyping work has been done with just a very bare metal um, partition manager. Um, if you have a well-defined protocol between that, then you don't care who you're talking to. And so just hypervisor agnostic is one of the reasons. Uh, I would say paravisor agnostic. Oh, is sorry, a, is yeah, paravisor yeah. because but we, yes, we're yes, talking yes, about it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, um, but, but no any other technical limitations which you encounter apart from this agnostic um, convenience? No, right, none that, none, that I, none that we've come across. So, yeah. Thank you. Sure, thank you. So regarding this earlier question about like why do we have this, well, so we need this, this SVSM attestation thing. Why does it not go through the VTPM itself? Um, and why is there this separate protocol for it through the SVSM? One thing to think about is that not everybody who is using the SVSM necessarily has a VTPM. So there are other cases for this. And there might be some users who don't have that at all but still need to attest the SVSM. So that's one reason why you might have those be separate. Thanks, I, I have a completely different question. Um, since you have FFA already implemented in the normal world VMs and possibly in the secure world partitions, would the VMs inside of these planes be able to use FFA to communicate with the, the hosts and with secure services? Um, yes, they could depending on the policies uh, enforced inside the RMM. By default, the RMM um, uh, 
sends all SMCs from any PN to plane zero. Um, it can, uh, we don't have any configuration options on it, but then um, uh, everybody gets to write their own VMM anyway. Uh, they could reconfigure the VMM to send those to the secure services instead of sending them to plane zero in that case. Well, if that's it, then uh, thank you. All right, that's not as con uh, controversial as I thought it might be, so thank you.